So, gisuwat rana sa mga tao. That is why I believe if you read the first five books of the Bible, which were written by Moses, Moses was given the wisdom of God. Moses was not present in creation. But he wrote the book of Genesis. And he wrote, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Although he was not present, but the author of creation and the author of the Word of God, the Bible, was present. And he gave Moses this wisdom. And all the scientists today, even the scientists that deny these facts, all the scientists could, cannot deny the fact that God created this world. They try to uh, tell us that everything evolved. But let me tell you, everything did not evolve. Everything was created by God. And we see here that Solomon talked of verse 34, and there came of all people to hear in 1 Kings chapter 4, the wisdom of Solomon, which is, was actually the wisdom of God, from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Amongst those who had heard of his wisdom was a particular queen that you probably are familiar of. He was the queen of Sheba in Ethiopia. She traveled nearly 2,214 kilometers. Layu na magisunan lampas panas Manila. Kaya Manila, if you fly, it's only about mga 600, 700 kilometers. Adto kadito. Lampas pa, but she traveled as far as 2,214 kilometers just to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And, and she was shocked how well Solomon answered. She thought she was educated. But when she met the wisdom of God, she was shocked. In 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verse number 6, uh, uh, Records her reaction, how be it? I believe not their words until I came, and my eyes have seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom, Queen of Sheba said, was not told me, for thou exceedest the fame that I heard. So it's a bit odd when we hear of the greatness of the wisdom of Solomon. Many people around the world expressing this wisdom. Many people coming to Jerusalem to hear of the wisdom of Solomon. But yet we read in Ecclesiastes chapter number 1 and chapter number 2, a different tone. Lahi ang tuno ni Solomon. Mura siya gamahay. Mura guay hinungda ng iyang wisdom. In fact, if you were noticing one of the verses, one of the verses said, His wisdom remained with him. But yet he did a lot of things. He, experiment, he experimented with a lot of things. In chapter number 2, verse number 15, and chapter number uh, uh, 17, uh, 2, verse number 17, we find that anything under the sun, iyang gisudlan. Moanang ni Abutsya o point in his life where he had a thousand women. Because each and every woman represented a certain place, a certain country, a certain culture. A certain language and I believe part of that attraction was not just a physical attraction it was also that he could learn everything but yet in the end Solomon said all is vanity the wisest man that ever lived that night when God asked Solomon and David and Solomon their their leadership was transitioning and David was getting old and and, and Solomon was now given the reins of leadership in Israel. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 5, God talked to Solomon and God said to Solomon, Solomon, what do you want from me? Kanindot anano? What do you want from me? And Solomon answered in chapter number 3, verse number 6 of 1 Kings, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, According as he walked before thee in truth, in righteousness, in uprightness of heart with thee, thou hast kept for him this great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. 
a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy great, so great a people? Humble kay si Solomon. And the speech pleased the Lord. You see, God gives grace to the humble. Brother Edgar talked about it with regards to the home. We are never going to enjoy the home that God has designed if we have pride in our hearts. If the husband is proud and the wife is proud, the children are proud, everybody is proud. Yesterday, I was solemnizing a marriage over there in, a, or, or uh, doing a wedding over there in Mactan Island. It was a beach uh, side wedding and you know, it had wonderful uh, decorations and a nice setting, you know. But of course, uh, but that's fine, you know. We were there for the couple. But uh, I, I told the couple, I said, pride will never build a home. Proverbs says uh, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God was so pleased that Solomon preferred wisdom over wealth and honor. And in fact, God was so pleased that with Solomon's choice that he gave him all these three gifts. Wisdom and wealth and honor. So God is pleased by Solomon's desire for wisdom and apparently so was Solomon. So he wrote most of the books of, books of Proverbs. So why would Solomon say all is vanity? Wisdom. Why hinungdan? Why, why? And our message this morning is about wisdom. Two things this morning in this message. First of all, let's look at wisdom's principle. When we talk about wisdom, we're talking about God's wisdom. Before we try to really understand and we will be able to understand that question, why Solomon would write such a commentary on life, a, a very dark and bleak commentary on life. Uh, there's two books in the Bible that I kind of like want to really read really fast. One is Job and the other is Ecclesiastes. Mainalang Ecclesiastes has an ending that's good. And here, the conclusion of the whole matter. But when you start reading Ecclesiastes, you know, you kind of like, Murakag madipres ba? When you read Job, Murakag madipres. Dili lalim ang giagi ni Job. Thank God, Job is in the Bible. Amen? And we just have to read about him. And, and God ordained that. But it was not an easy thing that Job went through. And so let's talk about wisdom's principle. What does wisdom, what does God's wisdom do to us? And this message is to encourage us to invest in the wisdom of God. To invest it in our homes. To invest it in our life. To invest it uh, while we communicate with people in our jobs and in our schools and in our businesses. And the people we meet and, and in con get in contact with every day. Number one, God's wisdom teaches us to be peaceful considerate, merciful, and sincere. We can find all these things in one verse. Open to James chapter 3, verse 17. For those of you that are taking down notes, taas taas to ang point number one, Pastor Da. Letter 8, taas to da. Naalang diri. Kopyahan lang ni nga text, naanadiha ang imong punto. James chapter 3, verse number 17. The Bible says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, Peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So, ang wisdom sa Dios, God's wisdom teaches us to be peaceful, considerate, full of mercy and sincere. We need that kind of wisdom in our world today. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of conflicts arise from man's wisdom. When Solomon received the wisdom from God, 
<coughs> excuse me, in 1 Kings chapter 5, verse number 12, we find here that there was peace in the kingdom. Solomon inherited a kingdom that was war-torn. David was a man of war. Sigilagubat. Sigilag adto sa away. He was, a, he was a very skilled warrior. But when it came to Solomon's time, the kingdom had peace because it was run in the wisdom of God. Now, God had mercy on David. God had, had been, uh, uh, been with David because he promised that he would be with David. He did not agree with what everything David did. And David, uh, by the way, David uh, also had consequences in his life sometimes we skip those consequences but if you read the book of psalm you will find that david was going through the consequences of his bad choices but the wisdom that comes from god brings about peace when you are trying to live your life right now in your wisdom and it produces chaos and turmoil let me tell you that is not of god when there is hypocrisy and lying instead of sincerity and truth, that is not the wisdom from God. There are many people today, they think they are wise because they are successful in the eyes of the world. But everything that they do brings to chaos. Everything that they do uh, does not uh, 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 bring about mercy. Everything that they do is covered with lies. And that is a picture of man's wisdom but god's wisdom teaches us otherwise secondly letter b in wisdom's principle god's wisdom teaches us to fear god and to shun evil in proverbs chapter 1 verse number 7 the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction if you think you are wise but you do not have respect and reverence of god you do not have God's wisdom. You think just because you are in a position, just because you have possessions, just because you have a degree, that you cannot ever anymore sit at the feet of the Word of God and learn His wisdom. There's something wrong with that. Pastor, balik balik ramana ang Sunday school, balik balik ramana preaching ni Pastor, balik balik ramana kabaw naman ko anak pangotana. Are you living it? Do you see it in your life? It's that simple. Many Christians today, sad to say, have a head knowledge, but they do not have the wisdom that can be seen in application of that head, head knowledge from the Word of God in their life. They know everything. They know the verses. They can even do a discourse. But you look at their life. You look at their life. Humility. Proud. Dili considerate, dili sincere, hipokrito. Sige, lagbisyo lang ihapon. Naniguwang na lang sa Kristohanon. Nag-62 years na lang diri sa Bible Baptist Church. I'm the sample, ano ha? Dini, pasabot nga. Siguro, most of those nang namatay na siguro to eh. Itong nag-una na ito ba? Nagdugay na lang ang membro diri. Mao lang ihapon ang kinabuhi. And they strut around their life like a wise person. Okay, soon, and the Bible says that is not wisdom. Thirdly, we also find here in, in, in uh, uh, talking about the principle of wisdom that God's wisdom teaches us to give good advice to other people. When you have the wisdom of God, you are now able to give that wisdom to others. King Solomon did that in 1 Kings chapter 3. If you remember, we are not going to read this lengthy uh, passage of Scripture, but if you remember, there were two women that went to Solomon. Remember that? Because both of them, apparently, nanganak, uh, um, nanganak in English, but gave birth. <laughs> gave birth the same day. And when they uh, gave, my friends sila, friends, be a faith. Huh? Oh, be ape ape. Best friends forever. 
When they gave birth, they were friends, but then one of the women, ang, ang iyan namatay, patay. So, ang iyang dead baby, iyang gi-exchange sa katong buhi nga baby siyang amiga, and then iingon siya, ako ning baby. Of course, you know, I cannot relate, but I've always heard about mother's instincts. That a mother will always know that that is their child, that is their baby. I'm glad to see Mam Aryesga, by the way, sorry to, to cut this, but Mam Aryesga, before I forget, you're welcome. Mam Aryesga, one of our members in the past, she's now in New York City, but she's here. Thank you for being here. But anyway, so, Iangilis. So they went to Solomon, both of them. They were arguing. The one said, no, that's my baby. Then the, the, the other said, no, that, this is my baby, and that's your baby, the dead baby. So they went to Solomon, and Solomon said, okay, stop arguing. He said, since both of you claim that this, this, uh, uh, this live baby is yours, and then no one is claiming the dead baby, so let's just be fair. Swordsman, come. Cut the live baby in half. Of course, ang nireak, ang tinuod nga mama. The real mother said, No, King Solomon, please don't, don't cut the baby in half. That's okay. Just give it to that, that woman. I, I'd rather have that baby... Uh, with that, that other woman, my, my friend, as long as the baby is alive, then Solomon knew who the real mother was, although he was not a mother. Lisod na. Kanag mubati ka, you feel for a woman, you feel for a mother when you are a man. That's hard. You need the wisdom of God. How can you feel for other people out there that we minister to? How can you feel for the people in your office? How can you feel for the people that you go with in school? How can you feel for the people in your community? It takes the wisdom of God. God's wisdom teaches us to give good advice. God's wisdom teaches us to fear Him. God's wisdom makes us peaceful and considerate, full of mercy and sincere. This is wisdom's principle. Because of that, because of God's wisdom upon Solomon, people began to flock to listen to his wisdom. You know, we only have one shot in this life. There's no nine lives. All right? We only have one shot in this life, and you may have only one shot where you are right now. Some of you students, you're starting school and this may be the only time that you can be able to meet that very person that your classmate in this school year that classmate may die that classmate may transfer go to another place that classmate be may, may be uh, fail in a grade and then they're, they're they're gone but we only have one shot at this in life at this time in life make it count Kitang na ay kamatuuran and we have the word of God and we have been born again by, and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's tell others about Jesus. People came to hear of God, the true God. The whole world, in fact, came to hear the wisdom of God put in the heart of Solomon. Here's the good thing about God. We don't need to be Solomon. Solomon was already gone. But look at James chapter 1, verse number 5. Here's the beauty of, of God. The mercy, the love of God. James chapter 1, verse number 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you think you're smart? You think you know it all? Fine. But if you want the wisdom of God, you must come to a point of need. You must come to a point that you will say to God, God, I need you. Without you, I am nothing. God, you are my everything. David declared, the Lord is my shepherd. I have need of nothing. We, uh, without you, Lord, I will always be needy. Never come to a point in your life, let us never come to a point in our life that we do not need God. Watch our motivations. 
Nga no man, nga sige kag eskwila, nga nung gusto yung kaana, aro masikat ka, aro hindi nakakinalan sa gino. Because there are many people today, they try to achieve all these uh, intellectual uh, 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 positions in life, and achieve all these degrees. Uh, those are well and good. But many times when they come to that point of so-called intellectualism, they then they begin to argue the wisdom of God. Let me invite you to open to 1 Corinthians. Open to 1 Corinthians. Notice what the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 18. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 18. This is what the Bible says. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Pagbantay mo. Let us be aware of the people we go with. Let us be aware of what we are receiving. If you are in the universities and colleges, be aware what you are receiving. When your teacher, when your professor is trying to give you a so-called wisdom that brings you away from God, that is not wisdom, that's foolishness. Look at most of the anti-God people. They're intellectuals in this world. They're even trying to reinvent marriage. It's being fought right now in our Congress. It's in third and final reading. Because if you say that marriage is only between man and woman, buang ka, stupid ka, kitidra ka ka, mabawra ka. But the Bible says, but the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. They say, if you believe that you are hateful, I am not hateful. I'm just truthful. Just because we say the truth and you got hurt, becomes hateful. And if you do not agree with the world's system or the world's way of thinking, you become stupid and dumb. This is, this is what is happening in the world today, even among Christians. The new generation of the X and the Y and the Z, the millennial generation, even among Christians, you know, they, they, daghang kay question sa ilang preacher, daghang kay question sa ilang leader, daghang kay question sa gino. I Google rana na ako, pastor. Puro lang Google. Seems Google is God. When was the last time you ever really knelt down with an empty mind and you say, Lord, fill my mind with you? When was the last time? If we really believe that what God said, if any of you lack wisdom, ask. Every time we read the Bible, we should say, Lord, this is your word. This is your writing. This is your mind. I don't understand this. If you don't help me, please, I ask, Lord, help me. And the Bible says, and God promises, if you ask, He will give it you. Amen. He does not upbraid. Unsa may pasabot anang upbraid? Dili siya mangwinta. Be, tagaan tiga, maldito manggagot. Dito ka tagaan wisdom eh. Aka ni buutan ni, tagaan na to ni wisdom. No. If you humble yourself and ask, God does not count. Mangwinta ba? Aka ni gamay ra akong ihatag wisdom kay gahig o ni pero kung ni humble na ka sa imong kagalingon and you bring yourself down and say Lord I'm nothing without you God is going to give it to you that's what he said which brings us to the second and last point wisdom's person Jesus is our wisdom how can you say that pastor 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30. The Bible says, But of him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Gihimo paranato. Dili lang siya atong manluluwas. Siya sad ang atong wisdom. Siya sad ang atong righteousness. Siya ang atong sanctification. Siya ang atong redeemer. Limang gana, kompleto. That is why when we approach the throne room of God, we say in the name of Jesus Christ, because, be, because of the name of Jesus Christ, we have been made righteous. I cannot approach God's throne without Jesus Christ. I cannot approach God's throne in my righteousness. I know who I am, more so God. If we compare ourselves with each other, we can say, Oh, ma, holy, holy, siguro ko. But it is not us that we should compare with each other because comparing yourselves among yourselves is not wise. Compare yourself to God and see where we are. If you don't know it yet, let me remind you. Bible says, For all have sinned and come. There you go. That's it. Of the glory of God. That is why Jesus is our wisdom. Siya ang atong wisdom. In fact, the Apostle Paul also reminded us in the same uh, uh, chapter here in 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians. Our same book. Chapter number 2. This, and then the next chapter. And this really has challenged me. Even con- It still continues to challenge me. And this verse says here, in verse number 14, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. If you are born only once, you have only one birthday, you are a natural man. You need to be born again. You'll have two birthdays. In verse number 15, But he that is spiritual judgeth, all things. Maka, maka, maka discern ka. Yet he himself is judge of no man. And this, this, is, this is the one that really got to me. And is still getting to me. Verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Everybody read that phrase, that verse, that last part of that verse. Everybody read. But we have the mind of Christ. Ilang gidaisek ang mind ni Albert Einstein. Ilang gibutang ang NSS. Gitanaon nila sa microscope, electron microscope. Gisubject nila sa unsa ng mga, uh, kanang mga, mga experiments. Ilang gustong i-clone ang brain ni Albert Einstein para mabaligya siguro nila ang itumar na to. Sangan sa pil, E is equal to MC squared. Two pesos lang sa butika. Generic pharmacy. Ilang gustong himoon niya na makagsunan. Bisang pag-imong, ibutang ang brain ni Albert Einstein. Imong ibutang ang brain sa pinaka-bright nga poet, bright nga writer, bright nga scientist. Unsa pa diha, ibutang ni mo diha sa imong ulo makagsunan. Nagasto gasto raka, be born again. Because when you are born again, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And I continue to claim that Lord, do I have your mind? I want to use your mind. Lalimang kag naake mind sa gino. Pero nga nung sayo binugo lagi ta. Because we have not really exercised our spiritual nature. We are still focusing and investing in the things that are temporal, our flesh. That is why the spirit and the flesh fight one another every day. But the Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. And I want to live the life of Christ. And I want to have the mind of Christ. And I want to enjoy the life in Christ. Because that is what the God designed us to be. Jesus is our wisdom. 
How do you know if you are living in wisdom? If you live peaceably. If you are full of mercy. If you are one that are, is able to, to help someone get to know God and be able to live in the path of God, that is wisdom. Sometimes if we are not careful, instead of being wise, na wais na ta. Wais kayo. Maayo kay tang magpalusot. May this month be a month that we continue to invest in the Word of God and to grow the mind of Christ in us. We have the mind of Christ. Patubuo na to na, i-develop na to na. Ato nang padakon sa atong kinabuhi. I have nothing against if you are, you know, we have a lot of um, doctors here in our church and congratulations to you. Because God has gifted you with a, with a great mind, with a great intellect. But use that mind for the glory of God. If you compare your intellect, what you have learned, intellect is basically what you have learned from the world, to what you can learn from God, layo ra kayo Pero sa'y, the language of the world is that. They try to appreciate your achievements. Use that to be able to transmit a higher level of wisdom to the people that you engage with every day. Draw them by your degree and then give them real wisdom. Don't try to compete with them and, and, and don't try to be even imong labuan sila niya human mag-away na noon mo. Ayaw na, pasakti na sila. Lahi man nilang tumon, they will never understand that. If you have been gifted by talents and gifted by skills, use it so that you can be able to transmit real wisdom and transmit Jesus Christ to them. This message is an introductory message to this month's learning of wisdom. May each and every one of us invest in the wisdom that can only come from God. We thank God that we have His Word, the Bible. Come early. We still have a few Sundays left to learn the wisdom of the home, of God's design for the home. It's a wonderful lesson. But pastor, okay raman mi pastor. Ayaw paghuat nga mabungkag or maguba or magkagubot inyong balay. Ay ha pa kanya. Wala na taan ng series. Lahay na itong series. Pagpundo daan. So that when something comes up in the home, you can be able to rehearse. You can be able to study and review again what you have learned from the wisdom of God with regards to the home. Invest in the Word of God. That is why we do this. This is not just a, a religious schedule. And this school, divine service, pauli. Afternoon activities, evening service, pauli. Wednesday, midweek prayer meeting, pauli. Sabado, prayer meeting, pauli. It's not just a religious schedule. We have an objective why we do things here. Use it. Gamita, ayog sayanga. This is why we do what we do. And for our benefit, so that we can also be a blessing to others. If you're here today for the first time and you do not have that relationship with Jesus Christ, let me invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. If you are here today and you're struggling in your life and you, you, you seem like your life is chaotic and, you know, decisions here and decisions there, and you seem to be indecisive in your life, let me invite you to come to the altar and accept the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ where He says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask. We need wisdom. Fathers, we need wisdom. Dili lalim ni mag-amahan ka. Dili ni lalim nga bana ka. Dili ni lalim nga naa ka, nagtrabaho ka. Dili lalim nga nagnegosyo ka. Dili lalim. We need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God in handling relationships. Relationships are a ve- is a very dynamic uh, uh, area of our life. And uh, you know, relationship with friends, relationship with office mates, relationships with classmates. Uh, very dynamic. We need God's wisdom. How to deal with relationships, 
how to we need God's wisdom how to get up when we have made failure or we have done failure we have failed and made mistakes and done things that we should not have done we need God's wisdom to to rise up again and, and let me just add a little bit about that statement where you fall is where you stand up kung nahagbong ka diri diri ba diri 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 ba diri ba diri ka barog hagbong ka diha sa ka barog ang ang nahagbong ka diri diha ka barog kung diha ka nasayop sa imong opisina insaktuhay imong opisina ay balhin lang trabaho insaktuha sa and then balhin ana ba as wisdom diri ka nasayop diri ka nagkorek where you fall is where you stand. Amen? Kung diha ka na, na nagkaaway, katong tanan ni mong nagkaaway, insakto ha dito. Dili nga magpundok ka diri og team. Ya, kaaway giha punto ni mo. Na na kay bagong team. Nagkaaway na sa kadiri. Ay na sa ko. Daghan na kay kagkaaway. Amen? Nindot ang wisdom sa Ginoo eh. Nindot kayo. So ay ragod. Ginagmay ginagmay lang sa ay lagsag bigla. Ah. Ginagmay ginagmay lang sa. Apply this, apply that. What you've learned today, just for today, what you've learned today, Sunday school, in the message or wherever you have learned, maybe in your Bible reading, just apply it for this week. Come back again Sunday, kung buhi pa tayo, amen. Learn again and continue to grow the wisdom of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity, the privilege, the freedom to just learn from you. Thank you for the privilege even for preaching your word this morning. I pray that we will have the heart like Solomon, a humble heart. Because Lord, you give grace to the humble. And I pray that as you have promised us that if any of us lack wisdom, we will ask of you and this morning we ask your wisdom your wisdom and your wisdom alone Lord we need it so badly in a world full of lies and deceit sometimes because the devil is the master of deceit and the master of lies and many times we are drawn into these lies and we are drawn into these uh, things and we think it is true and we think it is okay, but in reality, it is the one that brings us to destruction. And Father, I pray that as we continue to do that, we know from your word that we will be able to be protected from the destructive desires of the evil one, destroying our life, our homes, our relationships, our future that you have planned for us. May each and every one of us today have a humble heart and seek your wisdom. You have said, seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I pray this time of response to this invitation that Lord, you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Well, heads are bowed and eyes.